All right, I did a video on the uh, Annie 556, the dual 555, and I really didn't show a circuit that used both of them at the same time, so I thought I'd do that today just for fun. Um, so these things basically work that there's a threshold and a, and a trigger. There's two comparators. One comparator is at two-thirds the voltage and one comparator is at one-third of the voltage. And the way that you generally always hook these things up is is just hook them together. So whatever the voltage, when it's high, it'll trigger on the two-thirds. When it's low, it'll trigger on the one-third. So you just hook them up a short amount like that. And then you want to compare them to, uh, to whatever... RC circuit you have, so you you basically hook the, you hook them up like this, right? So you have one RC circuit here, one RC circuit here. This one's going to be faster than this one here. I've got a 1K, 1K, so I have 500 ohms um, into a 0 0.01. So this one will oscillate faster, and this one is 10K and 0 0.01 microfarads. That one will oscillate slower. And then you need the reset C reset signal, so that's what you bring this in. And this thing resets every time it goes around. Every time it hits the threshold, boom, it moves it back down. It waits for the, these, these things to happen again. Um, so uh, on this side, I have introduced an additional resistor, and that slows down the rise time again, uh, or the fall time. So this sets the rise time, this sets the fall time, and I've just slowed it down to wi widen a pulse, okay? And I have a 1K, so I have a 10K, 1K. So that, that's all there is to my circuit. Um, and each one will oscillate on its own. This one will oscillate fast, and this one will oscillate slow. I'll show that to you, okay? So let's do that first. Okay, I have my mess of a breadboard there. And we can come up here, and we can take a look at the two signals we have. So this is our fast clock, and this is our slow clock. Let me do a single shot because this, this one's not triggering. So that one's fasts and these are slows. Um, and so we have two 555s running. This one runs that one fast and that one runs that fast. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to gate this signal by this signal. So I'm going to wire this signal to the reset line of that 555 and it will only allow that one to operate when this is high. So it won't allow it to operate there, but it will allow it to operate there. All right, so let's turn this back on and let me put that wire in. It goes over to here. Okay, so now we have a bunch of mess and I'm gonna do a single sweep, single shot here. So you can see that it's toggling when this is high, get rid of that, it's toggling when this is high, but it's stopped when it's low. So it's using, when it's low true reset, so it's resetting this this 555 here, and then allows it to free run, and then it resets it again. So we're gating this 555, so that's cool. So, uh, so I've accomplished the video, but I wanted to go one step further, and so we can get this to run again, and we're having a really high, really hard time triggering on it. And people say, well, that's, that's, that's because you're triggering on this one, you should be triggering on this one. And that's absolutely true. So we can go to the menu, and we can say, no, trigger on channel two, and set the trigger level. So now when we trigger on, on channel two, everything's fine, okay? Let's assume that you, this signal doesn't exist. That's something that doesn't exist in your circuit. And this is the only signal you have in your circuit, okay? And so we will go back to triggering on channel one. And so I'll turn off channel two. And that's the only one you have. And you want to trigger on that one. Okay, well, you can do the single sh shot. Okay, that works. But you want to have it there all the time. You want to trigger on this. Well, what are you going to do? Um, one of the things you notice is that there's a whole bunch of pulses, but this is which one's longer. So on this oscilloscope, I can say um, I can say menu, I can say trigger type. I have it set to edge, but this one has it set duration, okay? And so I can use duration. And uh, so duration, um, you set what channel? the trigger is on channel one, and you can have it either a high state or a low state. If you want to trigger on a high state or a low state, I want to trigger on a low state, so I have it on the low. 
and then you you say I want it greater than some amount of time I want it greater than five microseconds okay and if I said greater than say maybe 20 microseconds it won't work it's because that's too long of a time there's no signal that actually is low for 200 I mean uh, 20 microseconds if we take a look at it uh, I need to trigger on it can I is there a force trigger hmm, that's interesting yeah force there we go uh, so if you didn't know that there's a force trigger button on your oscilloscopes usually um, so we can measure what is the uh, length of that well it's about 10 microseconds so we our pulse can be 10 microseconds so if we choose say six microseconds our duration here we can say we want six microseconds trigger on something that's a low state that's at least six microseconds long okay and there we go now we're triggering just fine again so uh, then we can go examine it do we can do anything we want to it all right so there you go a 555 timer times two is a 556 wired up a weird way um, the one wire that's missing here is I took the slow one okay I took the slow one and I took its output okay I didn't show the output so these are the outs out and out okay I took this out and I took it around over to the other side and over here there's a reset and this reset just floats over here so I'm tie tying the output to the reset line and I'm gating this side of the uh, of the 555 or 556 all right there you go video for the day <laughs>